You've got to begin to take a look at your life and look at where are you right now? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What gives your life a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy? What is it that you could love doing seven days a week? See, you don't get in life what you want, ladies and gentlemen. You get in life what you are, not what you want. You see, the good news is that we can always become more by working to develop ourselves. Think about that. We don't need faith to direct us when everything falls into place. We need faith to sustain us when all hell is breaking loose. I don't need you to tell me how to act when I get healed. I need to teach me how to survive when I don't get healed. I don't need you to tell me how to shout when I got a new job, a new house, a new car. I got enough sense to be happy when things go right. But teach me how to be happy when all hell is breaking loose. Things are getting bad instead of better. Teach me how to stand when it's raining down on my face and tell me how to keep trusting God when he says no. You know what I thought to myself? I thought I would hate to live and die and never know what would happen if I ever committed myself to anything. Some people have never thrown their whole self at nothing. Not at school, not at work. You had one foot in and one foot out of every dream all of your life and you've never seen what you could be if you ever really connected and threw everything. When you ask God for something, quick, trip it. He got it from him. Well, Lord, if I could just stay with him a little bit longer, maybe you don't need him. Maybe he the reason you ain't got nothing now. Well, I don't want to leave him because I've been with him eight years. Well, hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You want eight more years of this? The only reason I'm telling you this because this is how I made it. I just do me. I stay uniquely who I am because you are okay just the way you are. Because you, God made you uniquely who you are. He wanted you to be just like you are. And to the positive, once you get that mentality, you can listen at a person talk a few minutes and either it feeds you or it doesn't. And you learn sooner or later that things that don't feed you, you don't spend time fooling with it because it is counterproductive to where you're trying to go. It, you don't argue with people. You stop arguing with people. You just move aside and go on in your own direction because you, you, you finally got it on the right road and you don't want anything to blow you off course. And now that you've got your focus, you want to be able to maintain your focus and keep moving forward. Likewise, failing has the pathology. You can get in around failing people and have failing circumstances and listen at negative talking. And after a while, you find yourself unable to get back up again because not only are you down but what is worse is your environment is down and everybody who's talking to you is talking down and you develop a mentality built around your condition the greatest enemy of success is the fear of failure some people are afraid to pursue their success because they believe they might fail and so they don't try to do something new Success is the potential destiny of all created things. Every seed has a tree in it, and the potential success of that tree is in that seed. And that's the way you are. Whatever you were born to do and be is in you now, and the success of your life depends on you becoming all that is trapped inside of you. The third thing about success is important is to define it. What is success? And that is success is the completion and the fulfillment for your existence. Success is the completion and the successful fulfillment of the purpose for your existence. Success is not making a lot of money. Success is not having a big house with a car by a lake. Success is not having a lot of friends and a lot of accolades and a lot of plaques on the wall. Success is really very, very simple. It's you discovering your purpose and then completing it before you die. Success is not measured by what you've done compared to what others have done. And this is very important because sometimes we compete with other people and because we do better than them, we think we are successful. Success is not outwitting or outclassing other people. You can always find somebody less than you, so you think you are successful. Therefore, success should not be measured by what you've done compared to what others have done. Then how do you measure success? Here's how you measure it. Success is measured by what you've done compared to what you should and could have done. Put God 
first. Everything that I have is by the grace of God. Understand that. You owe him a level of commitment beyond all others. God didn't bring you in this world to be average. God didn't bring you in this world to wake up and die one day and just be another person that lived and died and didn't do anything significant in this world. Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Don't hide your delicate pride from the truth. Everyone took ownership of their mistakes. Everyone took ownership of the problems. Take ownership of your job, of your future, and take ownership of your life. And lead. Lead yourself and your team and the people in your life. Lead them all to victory. The confident man or woman is someone we all admire. Someone we all want to emulate, and rightly so. Confidence has to do with inspiring trust, which you can only do by having faith in other people. Confidence enables you to walk into a room full of strangers and converse with anyone without fear. It makes the strangers in that room think, here is someone I not only can talk to, here's someone I want to talk to. An ill at ease person makes everyone around him ill at ease. Feeling right makes others feel right, and they in turn give back what's inside them, the very confidence that you give out. Because it's not like you don't have a dream for your life. It's not like you don't have a desire. In fact, some of you, it's not that you don't even have faith in God. Your problem is every time you step out, you have yoked yourself up to people that you have no business being yoked up to, and your life is going in zigzags. Why is it I'm back here again this time like I was last year? I should have overcome that. I should be further. I should be stronger. Everything you're going through, is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just got to quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're going to see exactly why it went that way and you're going to be okay with it. Anybody who's not ever willing to risk will never do very much. And in all probability, you'll end up being quite bored with your life. A couple things that I said last night that I don't want you to forget is walking by faith is taking step one before you know what step two is. After a few times, you get a little more used to it and it's not quite as scary, but taking a step of faith is stepping out to do something when you don't know how it will be provided for. To grow up at all means that you have certain kinds of vital equipment that are necessary to survive in this tough, technical, highly developed world of ours. What are your strong points? They have to be there or you wouldn't have made it this far. Chances are you not only have a personal strength, a gift or talent or real ability that should be a source of pride and give you real confidence, but it's something you take so for granted that you don't realize what it's worth. Your talent and skill is what you take for granted and maybe don't value enough. Do you realize the percentage chance of you being born when you were born to do what you do and you're going to walk around in self-doubt trying to figure out if God chose you? You ought to know God chose you. You ought to believe God chose you and you ought to go through your life with your head held high no matter what is in your bank account because I'm chosen. But once a person's mind is expanded with an idea, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. So some of you are going to experience a breakthrough. Some of you are going to go back and look at your dreams and brush them off. Whatever goal that you have in mind, I want that to be a goal that will challenge you. Something that will make you stretch. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it? That you talk yourself out of it. Whatever it is, bring it back out there. How are you going to do it? That will come to you in due time. Confidence is the right note. And other people's confidence is the sympathetic vibration. It's confidence that makes people want to believe what you say to them, want to accept you 
as you present yourself. But confidence is more than something that passes between two individuals on their way through the day or through their lives. Confidence is the entire basis of social order. If your friends judge you for being real, they're not true friends. A true friend will accept you for who you are, faults, weaknesses, shortcomings and all. And people that judge you are not being honest with themselves. They're just wearing their mask, hoping that you don't notice. Everybody is dealing with something. There are no perfect people. But we live in a society that stresses image. It tells us if we don't have it all together, if you don't wear the latest, drive the latest, then you're less than. This creates all kinds of pretending, trying to impress. And that may feel strong, but in fact, it's weak. If you can't be honest with yourself, if you have to hide your struggles, act a certain way to keep up your image, that's going to keep you from your full potential. God is not looking for the ideal you, the pretend you, the future you. He's looking for the real you. To commit means to put your body and soul into something. To offer your life as a sacrifice means that you're willing to make a bargain with fate. And the bargain is, I'm going to act as if I give it my all. Then the best possible thing will happen because of that. And it has to be an act of faith because how are you going to know? You can look at other people, but that isn't going to do it. It's, it's a decision. That's the covenant. Right? It's a decision about how to live in the world. Because the evidence can't be there before you make the decision. You can never shine trying to sit on someone else's sun. You can never figure out who you are if you're consumed in everything that everybody else is and what they're doing and the moves that they're making. There is a saying that you have to fake it until you make it. Most of y'all have been faking it for so long, you're never going to make it. Most of y'all have been faking it so long, you now believe your own tricks. Most of y'all have been living a lie for so long that you believe your own lies because you're trying to chase someone else's life all while ignoring your own life and your own path all while ignoring what God has in mind for you. There are three areas which we have to talk about before you're ready to add confidence to the other building blocks of your unshakable character. Those three are first, seeing how you can derive confidence from that formal education and training you've received and the characteristics of your teachers and mentors. Second, drawing confidence from the challenges and experiences you've had in all areas of your life and the success you've had in dealing with them. And third, developing the quality of inspiring confidence by uncovering your own confidence in who you are and how you were raised. Fear, it's going to be overwhelming, but I'm telling you, you close your eyes at night and you go to bed and fear, it's overwhelming, but I'm telling you, if there's just a hint of faith, some of you are waiting for great faith. You don't need great faith. Fear creates mountains. Faith removes mountains. It's not what you are that holds you back. It's what you think that you are not. That's what holds you back. You cannot always control circumstances, but you can always control your own thoughts. Nothing changes until your mind changes. Information does not bring transformation. Conversion does. And the question is, if you die today, what ideas, what dreams, what abilities, what talents, what gifts will die with you? There's no such thing as try. So most people like to use that language. They don't want to commit themselves because commitment means, among many things, no excuse is acceptable. That's what it means. No excuse that if you decided that you're going to do this, if it becomes hard, then do it hard. If it's difficult, so what? If it's inconvenient, so what? See, a lot of people made a commitment to come here tonight, but they looked outside and said, it's raining. And that's how people do about their dreams. They don't honor their commitment to themselves. Let me tell you what happens when you don't keep your commitment. Number one, it begins to deplete your self-esteem and it erodes your self-image. The other thing is that you begin to develop weak relationships with people. People begin to realize they can't depend upon you. They can't rely on you because you won't keep your word. You've established that kind of reputation. Just think, what would your life be like if you decided to keep your commitments? that we decided to do the things that we said that we were going to do. You become a leader when you impact the actions of humans. And what makes you a leader is when you develop certain attitudes that when they are expressed, those attitudes 
inspire other people to cooperate with you. The capacity to lead and the ability to lead resides in every human. However, most of them will die as followers. I believe that trapped in every follower is a hidden leader. So confidence is not some little thing. It's a powerful force that can grow in power and flourish if given the right environment. A truly confident person's belief in himself is strong enough so that he's able to believe in others. Conversely, distrust in yourself breeds distrust in everyone you meet. A confident person gives you confidence. She creates confidence in others. The strength of her character makes you a stronger character. The question for us here is, how do you and I develop confidence? How do I learn to believe in myself so that others will believe in me too? You can't inspire confidence or feel confident in yourself if you can't feel confidence in others. Every decision that you make has consequences, even the smallest decisions. Many of you are not where you're supposed to be, not because you're not gifted. You have absolutely no discipline. There are two kinds of people. There's the type of person who says, I'm going to wait till I feel like it before I do it. And then there's a person who says, I've got to do it so that I feel like it. One will never get anything done because they're still waiting to feel the moment to move. And the other person says, no, I need to move. And then I will begin to feel the moment. We sometimes think that an epic life occurs one sunny Friday afternoon when the stars line up and something revolutionary occurs. A great life is built not by revolution. A great life is built by evolution. Small and steady wins the race. What you do every day is far more important than what you do once every decade. What you do every day is simply your life in miniature. And as you live every single day, so you're crafting your life. What you do over the next hours is really building your future. And if you can just get, and I can just get every single pocket of 24 hours right as best as we humanly can, the rest of our life is going to take care of itself. Maybe you're in a situation right now, you're like, I hate where I am. The problem in my life is where I am. I hate my relationships. I hate the way I feel. I hate where I am. And what begins to happen to us is we start to think the problem is where we are. But your problem is not where you are. Your problem is where are you headed? The truth is we grow in the difficult times. That's when our character is developed. That's when we discover talent, confidence, courage that we didn't even know we had trying to encourage you tonight that every gap in my life is giving me hope that I am still becoming, that I am not done growing yet, that the story is not over. Anybody thankful that you haven't stopped growing, but this year, it doesn't have to look like last year. You can become more. But you have to do something important. Forgive yourself. Quit dwelling on everything you've done wrong. Quit replaying your failures. Quit reliving your mistakes. Devote yourself to something bigger. Be decisive about what you're going to do. Say, I'm going to do it and that's it. And then be disciplined about getting it done every single day, whether you feel like it or not. is essential to what you are used to hitting you are used to hitting a spin around three times uh, gonna break its five way to have a great marriage uh, and three way to start your life over and eat this is a new probe 100 pounds and take this pill and you will be back able to get into the dress you more to the prom but the truth of matter is a day of not eating one day one day 
does not consider a debt and you are not going to be a trend if you want to get to your money invest everything that happened to you it's for your growth it's time to suffering that make you great to set how sever the failure you never give up if it nothing ever permanent you from being the best version of yourself nobody told you you are limited you had never failed at, at anything and you know wouldn't fail going to forward what would you dream how big would you dream be guarded in advance it's a net most powerful and creative forces in uh, universe that quieted friends be grateful for all the thing because all the thing about contributed to the advancement all the things should be included you graduated and right wins and lose opportunity advice challenge right stated and process right lesson and for the most of us 2022 it was year of pain it was year of people look back on like and i cannot find nothing to be grateful but the ability learn 